Something is happening in New Brunswick. People are losing their memory. Their muscles are wasting away. Some are hallucinating. Others can barely walk. These are not isolated cases. Over 400 people across the province have shown the same devastating symptoms. And that number, over 400 confirmed cases, may only reflect the most severe. The ones who ended up in specialists' offices. The ones who couldn't be ignored. But what about the people with milder symptoms? Memory lapses, fatigue, brain fog, tremors, things that can be brushed off as stress or aging. What if there are thousands more silently experiencing the same thing, but were never tested because it didn't seem serious enough? What if this isn't just a medical mystery, but a larger, unrecognized crisis hiding in plain sight? The illness is real and officials are pretending it isn't happening. According to the government, there is no illness at all. So let's ask the question they won't. Why? In 2019, a neurologist in Moncton, Dr. Marrero, began noticing unusual cases. Young people, no history of dementia, no known trauma, but they were declining fast. Cognitive failure, coordination loss, sudden neurological collapse. The symptoms didn't fit any known disease pattern, and the cases kept piling up. By the time it reached public attention, there were already hundreds. You'd think that kind of medical anomaly would bring in national health experts, but instead, the province formed its own internal panel. They reviewed just 48 cases and concluded there was nothing new, just misdiagnosis, just Alzheimer's, case closed. This wasn't just a failure of science, it was a failure of leadership. Instead of expanding the investigation, the province narrowed it. Instead of listening to experts, they silenced them. Except not everyone agreed, and the most credible objections weren't from activists. They were from inside Canada's own federal health network. In 2024, The Guardian published leaked emails from two federal scientists, Michael Coldhart, a senior prion expert, and Samuel Weiss, a neuroscientist. Coldhart said he believed their investigation had been intentionally shut down. His exact words, it's as if someone doesn't want the answer. Samuel Weiss said federal experts were cut out of the process entirely. These were the very people trained to find emerging diseases. So who told them to stop? Now here's where it gets uncomfortable. Many patients self-reported exposure to things like algae, pesticides, or industrial chemicals. But that's anecdotal. It's what they remembered. Dr. Marrero went further. He ran actual lab tests. According to a detailed report from Beyond Pesticides, nearly 90% of his patients had elevated glyphosate levels in their bodies. Glyphosate, one of the most widely used herbicides in the world. In New Brunswick, glyphosate is used heavily in forestry. And who's the largest forestry operator in the province? J.D. Irving. Irving is everywhere in this province. Forestry, shipping, rail, oil, hardware stores, construction, energy. For decades, they also owned every major English language newspaper in New Brunswick. That's not an exaggeration. That's what a Senate report called deeply troubling and unique in the developed world. In 2022, they sold their media arm, Brunswick News, to Post Media, a chain owned by U.S. hedge funds. But think about the timing. They sold the newspapers right as pressure was building around glyphosate, environmental damage, and public health risk. Did they just want out of the media business, or did they want distance from liability? To be critical of this analysis, one should ask, if glyphosate is used all around the world, why aren't we seeing mass neurological cases in other places? The answer may lie in how and where it's used. Glyphosate is applied globally, but exposure levels and application methods vary drastically. In most parts of the world, it's applied to crops, done with controlled machinery, often processed or washed before reaching the consumer. But in New Brunswick, it's different. Here, glyphosate is sprayed from plains over forests, near water sources, homes, and schools, reapplied year after year in the same zones. This means residents may be inhaling it, ingesting it through water, or absorbing it through local food and game, 
far more than people in areas where it's used only on farmland. Combine that with New Brunswick's limited public oversight, long-standing ties between industry and government, and the lack of independent testing, and the risk of chronic overexposure becomes very real. Some countries have banned glyphosate outright, others have restricted it, but in Canada and the US, it's still in widespread use. A 2022 study showed that 99% of Canadians have detectable glyphosate in their urine, but the levels vary dramatically based on where people live, what they eat, and what water they drink. In most people, these are trace amounts, but in Dr. Marrero's patients, the levels were significantly elevated, far above the national average. That doesn't prove glyphosate caused the illness, but it raises serious questions. Maybe it's not just the glyphosate. Maybe it's the way it's applied. Maybe it's what happens when you mix glyphosate with pulp mill runoff, industrial exposure, harmful algae, and political silence over decades. One thing's for sure, we can't ignore these elevated glyphosate levels. In late 2024, a new premier, Susan Holt, finally requested federal help to reinvestigate. That's a step in the right direction but not a single official has acknowledged the earlier mistakes. Not one has apologized to the families. And still, there's no formal diagnosis, no support, no treatment plan. People are suffering, and the story is still being buried. I'm not a doctor. I'm not a scientist. I'm someone from here, someone who's watched people get sick while everyone else looks away. I'm not here to blame anyone. I'm here to ask, why were federal scientists told to stop? Why were elevated glyphosate levels found in 90% of these patients? Why is no one held accountable, starting with government officials? And who benefits most when the truth stays buried? Maybe it's easier to pretend there's no illness, but if this were your family, your town, would silence still be an option? The people of New Brunswick deserve better. They deserve answers. They deserve protection and they deserve to be heard, no matter who it makes uncomfortable.